Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. Today in this video, I'm talking about mirrorless cameras. What is the hype about mirrorless cameras? How is it exactly different than the DSLR? It's not a new topic. Mirrorless cameras have been in the market since a long time. People are familiar with it. The million dollar question is, should you invest in one? I'm going to answer this million dollar question in this video. So at least you can subscribe to the channel. It's free of cost. Okay, enough of it. 110% the video will help you to get a better understanding of what mirrorless cameras are and help you to make a purchase decision. So without wasting any time, let's get started. First, let's quickly understand the difference between a DSLR and a mirrorless camera. In a DSLR, you have a mirror where the light hits and it passes to the optical viewfinder. When you actually take an image, this mirror is moving out of the way and it is revealing the image sensor and then the image is captured. The major difference between a DSLR and a mirrorless, as the name suggests, is the absence of this particular mirror. There is no mirror present, so there is no optical viewfinder. What you have in mirrorless cameras is an electronic viewfinder. Now, what is an electronic viewfinder? It's basically a miniature version of the display that your camera has. That's it. What do I prefer, optical or electronic viewfinder? I prefer electronic over the optical one. The reason for it is, when I'm using a DSLR, when I'm changing the exposure, I'm not able to see the live changes through optical viewfinder. So when I take the image, the exposure that I see in the optical viewfinder is very different than the final image. If you're using an electronic viewfinder, this problem won't occur. The reason why mirrorless cameras are so compact is because the mirror is taken away from the camera system and that saves a lot of space. But that's not the only advantage you get by removing the mirror. As I explained before, every time you take an image through a DSLR, the mirror has to move away and then the image is taken. Now when we are talking about capturing a single image, this time is not much. But when we are talking about consecutive images, this time gets added. Like for example, if we are talking about shooting 10, 20, 30 images, this will make a difference. That is why you can see the latest mirrorless cameras can shoot 20, 30 frames per second but the DSLRs cannot do that. Even the autofocus in the mirrorless cameras have been improved drastically. If you compare the latest mirrorless cameras with the older DSLRs, you will see the mirrorless cameras have eye autofocus, face autofocus and they can also track the subject continuously when you're shooting video. So in terms of technology, mirrorless cameras is a step ahead than the DSLRs. One myth that some people have is that the mirrorless cameras are better than DSLRs in terms of image quality. Now this is absolutely wrong because the image quality is dependent on the image sensor and doesn't matter if it's a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. So for example, if there are two cameras, one is a DSLR, the other one is a mirrorless camera. Both the cameras have the same sensors, they will have pretty much similar image quality. So now that we know the differences and have a better understanding of mirrorless cameras, the question is, should you buy one? There are a lot of things to take into consideration while making this decision. The first important thing is, do you own a DSLR? If you don't own a DSLR and this is your first camera, I would recommend to choose a mirrorless camera system. Because companies are developing the mirrorless camera systems now and have stopped developing the DSLRs. So if you're looking for a long-term usage, the mirrorless obviously is a better investment. If you own a DSLR and you're thinking of whether you should or should not upgrade to a mirrorless camera system, you should think why do you want to upgrade? What are the limitations of your current camera body? Like for example, I was using a Nikon D750. Great camera, full frame camera, amazing image quality. The reason I upgraded to Nikon Z6 is because my DSLR, Nikon D750, could not track the subject when I was shooting the video. And this is a very important feature, especially when I'm shooting these kind of YouTube videos. If you're into videography, I would highly recommend to switch to a mirrorless system. Not only it focuses well, but also it's most suitable for videography. As I said, it's lightweight. When you're using it with a gimbal or you're shooting handheld, that extra weight difference makes a lot of difference. Most of the mirrorless cameras can shoot in 4K. Some of them can also shoot in 8K and also slow motion videos. So if you're a videographer, a filmmaker, a mirrorless camera is definitely a better choice. Talking about photography, it depends on the genre that you're shooting. If you're a portrait photographer, a mirrorless camera is going to be a game changer. Once you start using face and eye autofocus and you get habituated of it and then you again start using a DSLR, you have to manually move the focusing points, you realize how easy, how convenient it is to use eye and face autofocus. 
If you're into wildlife and sports or any kind of action photography where you need a faster camera, don't only focus on the FPS of the camera. Because in the mirrorless cameras, there's one problem with the electronic viewfinders that is blackout. Now what is blackout? Basically, when you capture an image, there's a black screen that comes for a fraction of a second and moves away. When you're doing high speed photography and the subject is moving, you need to track that subject and blackout will be an issue. So if you're into wildlife, sports or any action genre, you need to find a camera that has less or no blackout. For example, if you choose the Sony A9 and if you're using electronic shutter, you practically get no blackout. That is amazing. Talking about other genres like landscape, architecture, street, the mirrorless camera doesn't make a lot of difference. I have used both the cameras. I didn't find much of a difference. But as I said, the EVF does make a lot of difference. Just because I can see the exposure changes in the viewfinder, that is a game changer. The next important point is the lenses. If you have invested a lot in the lenses that are compatible with the DSLR cameras and you're switching to a mirrorless system of the same company, chances are those lenses will work fine if you're using an adapter. I have been using couple of my lenses with the adapter, the 50mm and the 7200mm and they were great. The problem is, if you're using an adapter, you're not using the full potential of the camera body. For example, when I'm using a native lens, especially made for mirrorless cameras, I'm getting 5 axis stabilization. But when I'm using an adapted lens with an adapter, I'm only getting 3 axis of stabilization. This is just one example. The bottom point is, you're not utilizing the full potential. Native lenses are expensive. No doubt, amazing quality, but they are expensive. When you talk about Nikon and Canon, they don't support lenses from Sigma and Tamron. And Nikon and Canon, the first party lenses are terribly expensive. But when it comes to Sony, it supports Sigma and Tamron lenses. And this is a huge deal from budget perspective. When you compare the price of first party and third party lenses, the price difference is huge even though the quality difference is not that huge. This is a very important point while switching to a mirrorless system and I really hope Nikon and Canon in the future start supporting these lenses. As I said before, budget is a huge factor when you're thinking of upgrading to a mirrorless camera system. The current market scenario is you have a lot of options if you're looking for expensive full frame mirrorless cameras. But if you're looking for good budget crop sensor mirrorless cameras, you don't have very good options. You have some good options but the number of options are less comparatively. Even if we talk about lenses, there are more lenses made for full frame mirrorless cameras and very less lenses made for crop sensor mirrorless cameras. So when you're thinking to upgrade to a mirrorless camera system, if you're on a tight budget, I would not recommend the mirrorless camera system. If you have a good budget, if you want the latest camera technology, definitely go with the mirrorless camera system. It's not going to disappoint you. However, no camera is perfect. Mirrorless cameras are not an exception. There are few problems with the mirrorless cameras. One is the battery life. Second, the blackout issue. And also, the mirrorless cameras overheat a lot when you're shooting at high resolution and FPS. Also, the number of lenses available for the mirrorless cameras are less compared to DSLRs. But these problems are getting solved gradually and the situation has improved a lot when you compare the current cameras with the cameras that were available a couple of years before. And the situation is going to improve. Mirrorless cameras is the present and is the future. Companies are working a lot harder with the firmware updates as well. It's just a software update but the performance of the camera improves a lot. So definitely the future of mirrorless camera is very bright. That's it from this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys got to learn more about mirrorless cameras. If this video helped you, press the like button. New to the channel? Definitely subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.